Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Intermediate Algebra. We're continuing our discussion on section 1.7. This is part 3. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at absolute value inequalities. Now, we've already discussed intersections and unions. When it comes to absolute values, what we have to note is that if we have the absolute value and we're asked less than some value, a less than is actually asking to find an intersection. An absolute value less than a number is an intersection. If we have an absolute value greater than a number, it's actually asking us to find a union. What solves one or the other? And if we recall, when we dealt with absolute value equations, we always wrote two equations. So when we write two equations to solve this absolute value, we're going to look at what is their intersection if it's less than. And when we write two equations for this absolute value, we're going to say, what are the union? What solves one or the other? So hopefully, we'll see that in these next two examples here. Here I have the absolute value of x is less than 6. Well, if we write two equations, x uh, could be 6, x could be negative 6 if this was an equation. But since it's an inequality, we have to realize that x could be less than 6, as the statement says, or x could be greater than negative 6. Now notice, because I changed the sign, I have to remember to change the sign. So when we dealt with absolute value equations, we wrote two equations. Now that we're dealing with absolute value inequalities, we write two inequalities one of which we have to change the sign. We change the sign of the number. We change the sign of the uh, inequality as well. And now we can see the statements are already simplified. x is less than 6. So if he, this is 6, x is any value less than 6. If x is greater than negative 6, here's negative 6 on our number line. Any value greater would be to the right. And we can see this less than gives us an and statement. So if we were to write this in set notation x such that x is less than 6 and x is greater than negative 6. So we have set notation. We have graphic notation. And we can also write that in interval. From negative 6 to 6 are the solutions that will solve this and this. So the, the solutions is an intersection of these values. Let's look at this one here. We have the absolute value of x is greater than 6. Well, absolute values require us to write two equations. So x could be greater than 6, or x could be less than negative 6. And we'll see when we put this on the graph that it is an or statement. If x is greater than 6, that would be any value to the right, not including 6. So we use that parenthesis. Here we have negative 6. x is less than negative 6. That would be any value to the left of negative 6. And we see they do not have an intersection. We're looking for a union. So absolute value being greater than a number asks us to find the union. Well, how do I unite these? Well, if I want to write it in set notation, I just simply add the x such that and my braces. And it is an or statement. If I want to write it in interval notation, this section goes to negative infinity up to negative 6. And then I have to use this symbol because it is a union. I have two separate intervals. In this example, there was only one interval. Here I have two, so I have to unite them using a union. 6 to infinity is this part. So this or this are my solutions. So, one thing we want to be aware of is when we see an absolute value and a less than symbol, we're looking for an intersection. When we see an absolute value and a greater than symbol, we're actually looking for a union. So let's look at some examples here. For the first three examples, I notice that all these signs are less than or less than and equal to. So it tells me immediately that I'm looking for an intersection. Where do they overlap? And because it's an absolute value, I'm going to write two equations. x plus 7 could be less than or equal to 3. Just drop the absolute value signs and don't change anything. Or, or in this case, and x 
plus 7 is going to be greater than or equal to negative 3. Since I changed the sign of the number, I have to change the sign of the inequality. And now I can solve these separately. Subtract 7 from both sides. I get x is less than or equal to negative 4. Here I subtract 7 from both sides. And I get x is greater than or equal to negative 10. So if I wanted to join these, because it is an intersection, I could write it as a double inequality. So let's go ahead and do that. The least number, the greatest number from left to right. And x is less than or equal to the negative 4, but greater than the negative 10, which means negative 10 is less than x. So this is my uh, double inequality. In set notation, I simply add my x such that and my braces. And then I could graph it. If I'm going to graph it, we have negative 10 here. We have negative 4 here. They're both equal to. They include the endpoints. And x lies somewhere in between those values. And now I could pick a test point to make sure anything in this interval makes this true. Anything outside should make it false. So these are your three representations, algebraic, set notation, and graphing. If we want to write it in interval notation, it's as simple as saying, take the values and the symbols from our graph, and there we have the interval. So all the different ways to represent that solution. Now, if we recall, when dealing with absolute value equations, we always had to isolate the absolute value before we could write our two equations. That still holds true here. In this example, it was the absolute value was already isolated. Here, we have the absolute value minus 5 in this case. So we have to isolate it first. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. The absolute value of 2a is less than adding 5 to both sides will give me 4. So now that we have it isolated, we can write our two inequalities. 2a could be less than 4. I just drop the absolute values, but don't change any signs. And then 2a could be greater than negative 4. I change the signs here. And if we solve this, we get uh, a is going to be less than 2. And a is going to be greater than negative 2. I simply divide 2 for this one and 2 for that one. And these are what I get here. Now, because it is an AND statement less than an absolute value, we can write it as an AND statement. We could also write it as a double inequality. I'll do it right here. We have negative 2 and 2, and a lies in between those values. So we see that we have a is less than 2. That's that piece there. a is greater than negative 2. Negative 2 is less than a, still a true statement. All right, and then, of course, you could graph it and write it in interval notation. I'll leave that for you to do. Uh, that's good practice. Here, if we look at this absolute value, we have the absolute value of 2a minus 5 is less than negative 1. Hopefully, we assess it before we begin. An absolute value, we should know, is always a positive value. If this is positive, it can't be less than a negative value. And if we can identify that, we'll see that, hey, an absolute value is never negative, so it'll never be less than 0. It'll never be less than a negative. So this has no solution. There is no solution to this. And we can see that by assessing it before we begin. If we don't see that, and we actually write two intervals, and we work it through and solve it, we're going to find that you could not write this as a double inequality. It wouldn't make a true statement, because there is no solution that makes this true. Absolute values are never less than 0. All right, let's look at these next three examples. And we see that we have greater than. This is greater than, this is greater than, and this is a greater than. So I know I'm looking for unions. I'm looking for what solves one or the other. So my absolute value is already isolated, so I can go ahead and write my two inequalities. a plus 1 could be greater than 4, or a plus 1 could be less than negative 4. I change those signs for the second equation. And here I solve it. I'm just subtracting 1. I get a is greater than 3, or subtract 1 here. I get a is less than negative 5. 
Now, <clears throat> I could graph this. I could write it uh, in interval notation. I could write it in set notation. Set notation is just adding the x such that and the braces on either end. Let's just go ahead and go straight to interval notation. Because a is greater than 3, it basically says from 3 to infinity. Here it says a is less than negative 5. Well, that would be from negative infinity to negative 5, left to right. Now, <clears throat> these are two separate intervals. They don't intersect anywhere. And that's OK, because we're looking for a union. So to write this in interval notation, we have to remember to use that union symbol. If you graph it, you'll see the same thing. And set notation, as we already discussed. Now here, again, absolute values have to be isolated. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides before I begin. And by doing that, I get the absolute value of 2x is greater than 4. Now I can write my two equations looking for a union. 2x could be greater than 4, or 2x could be less than negative 4, changing the signs. Solving this one, I get x is greater than 2, or solving this one, I get x is, oh, excuse me, less than negative 2. <clears throat> this could not be written as a double inequality. Even though it looks similar to this example that we just did here, because of that sign, we see we have two separate intervals that do not intersect. For this one, I'll actually graph it. So if I go ahead and graph this one, we have a negative 2, and we have a positive 2. This one says x is greater than 2, so that would be any value to the right of 2. This is x is less than negative 2, so any value to the left. And we can see they do not intersect. So this would be our graph. This would be our set notation. And if we were to write the interval from negative infinity to negative 2 is this piece. Or we use that union to, to infinity for that piece. So two separate pieces, what solves one or the other. All right, <clears throat> lastly, we're going to look at this example here. It's a greater than, so we're looking for an intersection. We have the absolute value of 2x minus 9 is greater than negative 5. And again, if we assess it, well, if absolute values are always positive, it will always be greater than a negative. So no matter what value I put in there, it's going to be true because it will be greater than a negative. All absolute values are positive. So if we look at this, well, we've already done the solution by analyzing it and critically thinking. Absolute values are always positive. So this has all real solutions. And that's the symbol we can use for all real numbers. And we can also write it in interval notation negative infinity to infinity. If we were to graph it, it would just be a parallel line to a number line. It just means all values make this true, because all absolute values are greater than negatives. All right, so let's do a really quick review. We have worked with absolute values uh, equations in the past. And we know that they give us two solutions. We write two equations. So x could be a, or x could be negative a. Those are just points on a number line. When we have less than an absolute value being less than a number, we have an intersection. Intersections can be written as double inequality. So we have negative a is less than x is less than a. And if we write that, we see we get a single interval. Here we have the absolute value of x greater than a. We're looking for a union, which is an or statement, x being less than negative a or x being greater than positive a we have the, inter, or, uh, the union of two separate intervals. All right, so I have two examples here. I want you to try these yourself. Notice we have an absolute value and a greater than. We have an absolute value and a less than. Try those two yourself. Make sure you check a test point in your intervals. And uh, good luck. Thank you for watching.